Neno la kobona mitayangu Imani yangu bwana ni Kristo Azma yangu bwana ni kufanana na wewe Maisha yangu bwana yote nakupa kwani ninatamani kuwana wewe 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 Even in and praise the wonderful name of our Lord and uh, Savior Jesus Christ what a joy and a delight to be uh, in your spaces right now, we thank you and thank you so much for joining us. We praise the wonderful name of our Lord uh, for giving us an opportunity. It's a personal joy for me to be back after a short break. And I'm grateful for uh, Pastor Odu and elders who fitted in for me when I was away. But we continue with the book of Genesis uh, foundations, the book of Genesis and uh, we are now coming up to chapter 12. This is Moment of Truth on Truth TV. Again, it's always a joy and a delight to come to uh, your spaces and share God's words. We are trying to uh, build our understanding of the book of Genesis, and we are saying this book is foundational to the rest of our Christian doctrines and um, beliefs. And so uh, a good understanding, a good foundation of the book of Genesis will help us, will uh, cause us to be um, far away in understanding the rest of the Bible. And so we thank God for the opportunity today uh, to carry on with chapter 12. And actually now this begins the second section of the book of Genesis. Many uh, people who uh, outline this book um, take the first segment to be chapter 1 to uh, chapter 11, where we have four major events, uh, the event of creation and, and, and fall and flood and the Tower of Babel, and, and that was up to chapter 11. Now, chapter 12 to chapter 50, we are looking at um, the, the founding fathers of the nation of Israel, the four great patriarchs. The four great patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and uh, Joseph. And we're looking at the, the founders of the nation of Israel. And so we, we, we are at that central point where we will be turning the page. Uh, the first 11 chapters cover uh, is a sweeping history of a long period of time. We, we suspect that the period of time covered from chapter 1 to chapter 11 will be about 3,500 years. Uh, but the history of the patriarchs, beginning with Abraham, uh, the four patriarchs, will cover the next 350 years. So the period is shorter in years, but there is so much to say about the patriarchs, and I think this is um, really important to God to, uh, to communicate, and that's why a lot is, um, is put in in these uh, chapters. And actually, beginning with the life of Abraham, because Abraham alone will cover about 12 chapters. And so we begin today with the um, story of Abraham, although the last part of chapter 11 covers the story of Abraham, but that's where we want to begin today. And so I want to invite us to read God's words. Again, we are in Genesis chapter 12. We'll be reading the first four verses and here is a reading of God's word. The Bible says, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse and all the people of the earth will, bless, will be blessed through you. Verses 4. So Abraham went. As the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him, Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Let us pray. 
Lord, we thank you for the time you give us together to study your word. And we want to pray that our coming together this evening, that you will be in our midst and that you will speak to us in a way that our hearts will understand your word. But much more so, Lord, as we seek to discern your calling for our lives, that we may be able to learn from the life of Abraham and be able to discern how we can discern your calling in our lives. So we ask that, Lord, you would speak to us in a very special way, and that this will be a very special evening, even as we come to your word, that we may feast at your word, and that you may teach us from your word. For this we pray in Jesus' holy name, and God will say it, amen. Amen. Uh, today, I know many of us are trying to fear God's will. Maybe it's what is the next step for my life. Who will I marry for some of you? Uh, what career path will I take? Is God calling me to move from my specific home area to research or somewhere else? Um, is God calling me for full-time ministries? Uh, and all of us, whether we are looking at the big questions in life or whether even small things, what would the Lord do, want me to do in regards to this and that? We are trying to figure out God's will for our lives. And we want to come to this passage and, and understand the calling of Abraham, uh, a very central figure uh, in the whole of the Bible, both Old and New Testament. He is very central. Uh, and then we, we come here to study his calling, but I want us to look at this passage with the eye of understanding God's calls for our own individual life. God has a uh, calling for all of us one way in a general sense. We are, we are called to put our faith in Jesus Christ. We are called to respond to faith in Jesus Christ, and we are called to obedience but also God calls us in very specific way uh, to do specific things in our lives as he did the life of Abraham. And so I'm praying that we will be able to glean principles on how we can discern God's calling in our own life from the life of Abraham. As I said, Abraham is a very central figure in both Old and the New uh, Testament. Um, he, 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 he is covered in the book of Genesis, 12 chapters exclusively. The, the, the next 12 chapters are about the life of Abraham. He is also referred as a friend of God. I was um, started to know that even in Arab, the Arabic language, there is, the way they refer to Abraham, they use the title, a friend of God, three times. In the Bible, in the book of Second Chronicles 20, verses 7, Isaiah 41, verses 8, and James 2, 23, he refers to God's friend, as in what a description that is, a friend of God. He's referred four times in the New Testament, and um, the, uh, the book of Galatians 3, 7 refers to him as the father of all who believes. Today, he actually refers to the father of three major world religions. The major world religion are Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. And all of them, they claim that their father is Abraham. Their father is Abraham. And we come to this chapter of Abraham, and God will uh, give a name or make uh, Abraham's name, great, which is a contrast to what we were studying in the previous chapter with Pastor Odu on the Tower of Babel and rebellion uh, that happened. People were trying to build a name for themselves, and God had to come and scatter them. And as a result of the scattering, we now have the table of nations. The nations have their origin out of that rebellion, but they were trying to build a name for themselves. In contrast, God gives a name to Abraham. In chapter 11, we have a people who are trying to make a name, to build a name for themselves. In chapter 12, we have a person who God's make his name. And you can start seeing that this now becomes the foundation of God's call, God's people. Um, the, this is the, the, the beginning of redemptive history. This is the beginning of God's redemptive history. 
God had promised that the seed of a woman will crush the serpent. And we can now start seeing the lineage being built from Abraham of that seed that will crush the serpent. So again, we now want to look at this from the eyes of God's call to Abraham. Number one, I want you to understand that God calls begins with God speaking. It begins with revelation, begins with God speaking. Now, we have here God speaking. Verses 12 is began by saying, The Lord say to Abraham, it didn't say that Abraham considered. It didn't start saying, but Abraham sat down and thought through a plan. It, it, it begins by saying, God uh, spoke. God spoke. And, and I believe God speaking is very special because if God did not speak, Abraham would have continued in the way of his fathers, the way of um worshipping of idols. It is God who made the difference. It's God who tore through the horizon and spoke to Abraham in a very special way. And God's call begins with God revealing himself. It begins with God revealing himself. One of my very um, favorite phrases in theology, and it's also a biblical quote, is that salvation comes from the Lord. If, if the Lord doesn't initiate the process, we don't have the capacity within ourselves to, to begin the process of salvation. It always begins with God. I, I am sure Abraham was no wiser than any of his relatives or his fathers, and he was going about his business like anybody else. And here he hears a voice from God. It is God speaking. It is God speaking that makes a difference in the life of Abraham. And I want to tell you, we cannot afford to assume or ignore the voice of God. One way that can be sure that will send you to hell is when you don't have the capacity to respond to the voice of God. And, and the Bible says there are people who have ears and they do not hear. They have eyes and they do not hear. They do not see, sorry. And, and, and it's a very special thing that is going on here that Abraham hears the voice of God and he responds to that voice of God. We're not told how God spoke, whether he spoke through a fiery bush or through a cloud or through a soft whisper. We are not told. But the Bible is very specific here that God spoke to Abraham. I want to tell you, Unless you hear God's voice, the trajectory of your life will not change and you are headed uh, fast-paced to domination if you don't hear God's voice. The only thing that can guarantee change in your life is when God intervenes sovereignly by speaking to you. And I'm glad that the Lord is speaking to some of you tonight. And whatever you do with the voice of God will determine whether your life remains the same or there will be change. By Abraham responding to God's voice, his life is altered dramatically. He becomes the father of faith. He becomes the founding uh, father of the nation of Israel. He becomes the father of those who would believe. He, he becomes blessed of the Lord by responding in faith, God's call. Number two, God calls is initiated by God. It's, it's God's who reveal himself. But also it involves God's choice. It involves God's choice. Uh, God chooses Abraham. I, I, I think we need to pause here and ask why Abraham? Why did God speak to Abraham? Uh, sometimes we tend to think that God spoke to Abraham because Ab Abraham was a person of faith. But no, Abraham will become a person of faith through response to what God will say to him. God's choice here is sovereign. Is God's just loving on Abraham like as it were out of the blues. It, it, it's not because Abraham is... It is 
handsome than any of his brothers or, or the native people. It's not because he's the best in the land of Ah of the Chaldeans. It's not because Abraham is a worshiper of God. As a matter of fact, this is startling when you read in the book of Joshua, chapter number 24, verses 2 and 3. Joshua providing more insights into the life of Abraham before he was called by God. This is what Joshua says in the book of um, Joshua 24, verses 2 and 3. He says, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, say. Long ago, your forefathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahum, lived beyond the river and worshipped other gods. Other gods. But I took Father Abraham from the land beyond the river and led him throughout Canaan and gave an, uh, um, to him many descendants, including Jacob. Now, I want you to understand the word, but I took your father Abraham. They were worshipping other gods. We, we have come to know that they were worshipping the moon god called Nana. Uh, that was what Abraham and his fathers were doing. They were moon-worshipping community. They were idolaters. And God, out of the riches of his mercy, uh, he, he, inter he intervened by choosing sovereignly Abraham. And God would even remember the nation of Israel in Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8. He will say, the Lord did not set his affection on you or choose you because you are more numerous than other people. It's not because you are great. It's not because you are had the, the numbers. Uh, I mean, this is an election season and numbers count. And God is saying, no, no, no. I did not choose you because you, you had numbers. No, 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 no. That, that is not it. Uh, as a matter of fact, you are the fewest of all people. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept an oath he saw to your forefather that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. A God sovereignly a choice. And I want to tell you, when you see yourself responding to the grace of God, do not turn your nose on other people. Or look down on them because they are not responding to the grace of God. It's because God chose you. There is no one who comes to the Father except those God calls to himself. And we can only respond to God because he first called us and loved us. And today, if God is calling you, whether it's a specific call or the general call he's calling you, it's his choice. God's sovereign choice. The only way we can respond to the choice of God is by worshiping him and just tell him, God, it's not because I was better than anybody else. It's not because I had better brains. It's not because I was smarter. It's not because I was moral. It is because of your love and your grace that you found me, that you found me. For us who have been rich by the grace of God, we are ever indebted to the great love God has for us. God has for us. God's call involves God's choice. God calls is costly. I want you to see this. This is what God calls Abraham. He said, tells Abraham, uh, Abraham, he says, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. The version, some version says, leave your country, your people, your father's household. And, and, and God calls Abraham to go and leave his people. I was reading about uh, of the Chaldeans that God called Abraham from. And this was a really developed place. It was a center of civilization in the then known world. It was um, as archaeology, um, biblical archaeology has revealed uh, there is a lot of civilization around this place of Ah. It was a city uh, more developed than any other part of the then known world. Um, and Abraham is called to leave his family, his friends, his contact, his security. And Abraham at this particular time, or Abraham at this particular time, he is 75 years old. 
Now, 75 year old by today's standard is a person who is retired. He's a person who is old. And I want to tell you, people who are 75 year old, if there's something they don't like in their life, it's changed. They are comfortable. They have settled in life. They have, they have seen it all. By the time they get to 75, they do not want change. And God is calling Abraham to leave the, the familiar to go to the unfamiliar. And I'll come to that point. But God is calling Abraham to leave everything he knows, the comfort zone, uh, the comfort zone where he is. And that's what the Bible says of all of us who want to follow Christ. In the gospel according to Luke chapter 9 verses 23 to 25, it says, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his own cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will, will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very soul? Those who want to come after God must be willing to pay the price. What a sacrifice this must have been for Abraham to leave all that is familiar to leave all that is familiar and, and, and go into a land that is not known. Uh, it must be costly. Uh, Abraham must have been saying bye to his family, never to see them again. I mean, Abraham is not just taking a road trip like we normally do. And by the time we get halfway through the journey, we stop for, for, for coffee or for drinks and we are taking selfies and updating and just saying an amazing road trip. Abraham has to say, uh, bid farewell to his family family members, probably he will never see them again. Travel in those days was dangerous. He doesn't know what awaits him on the way. He doesn't know whether he will make it or not make it. He's living civilization to go to a place he doesn't know. It's costly to follow God. And one of the reasons why people actually do not heed to God's call in their lives is because there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. And the price is costly. And, and many of us would rather stay in our comfort zone and, and, and just experience the, the safety that comes with what is familiar and what we are used to. Um, and, 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 and really not even engage in what God is calling us. Many people today, particularly those who are even called to Christian ministry, that one of the reasons why they would not want to even heed to God's calling is because they, they, they don't want to pay the price. God's call is, is, is expensive. It's a call, um, it's a call that is expensive. And, and, and many of us will not want that call. We will not even respond to that call. We will turn a blind eye or, or, or we'll turn a deaf ear to God's call for our lives because it's costly. I want you also to see that this God's call also is a call of faith. It's a call of faith and dependence. This is what the Bible says about uh, Abraham in this verse 1 that we are reading. We are even not beyond verse 1. It says, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and I will go to the land and will show you. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> God is amazing. He even doesn't tell Abraham, I'm going to send you to Canaan. He, he doesn't give Abraham the coordinate on the GPS and says, just key in these coordinates. You can even check how long the journey will be on your GPS. And this is exactly what I'm going to uh, get you. I am sure Abraham must have faced a really difficult time trying to tell his people uh, because he comes up and says, Abraham, what's up? And he says, I'm going to leave. And he's going to say, why? Uh, God called me. Which God is this? The God, the moon God? No, no, no. Uh, different God called me to go to this land uh, that he will show me. Are you sure you don't know where you're going? 
People must have thought Abraham must be out of his mind. Must have thought like Abraham is out of his mind. When God calls us, he doesn't reveal the, the, the final destiny. He calls us to a journey of trusting him. He calls us to a journey where he will reveal his plans as we go. And as we walk with the Lord is when he reveals the rest of the plan. You know, we, we love walking by sight. If I'm the one, I'll just tell God, show me the plan, tell me the benefits, uh, tell me the security that will come with his family. I can imagine somebody trying to tell me to relocate my family today from where I am settled. The kind of questions that I will have for him, I will be like, why am I relocating? If I'm relocating for a job, how much will that job pay? What is the security that comes from there? What are the social amenities surrounding there? Will my kids find schooling there? Will I find a safe neighborhood there? And I will have all this manner of question. But, but God calls Abraham, tells him, I will show you the land. I will tell you where to go. Abraham has no clue where God is calling him to go. And yet, he responds by faith. He responds by faith. And this is why when God puts the honor roll, when God's have heroes of faith, and he, he puts up a, a big placard to display those people who are people of great faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, he, he, he reserves a huge chunk for Abraham. This is what he says in Hebrews 11 verses 8. By faith, Abraham. It was by faith. I mean, it was nothing short of faith that Abraham responded. When God called him to go to a place he would rather receive an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Abraham didn't have any clue where he was going. He didn't have any idea where he was going. The reason why uh, people turn away the call to be even followers of Christ is because this is a religion of faith. We are called to believe that we'll go to heaven, that there's a destiny we are going. God calls you to leave your work and to pursue ministry, and he doesn't give you all the details. Uh, God calls you to follow him in obedience. I mean, I find people every day, and they share their testimony, and I'm thinking, like, why not like you are believing in God? People would think you are crazy. And, and people today will be responding in God by faith, as Abraham did. And it's a call of faith. It's a call of faith. It's a call of faith. And yet, even if this is a call of faith, I want to encourage all of us today to hit God's call in our lives. As Abraham did. The example that Abraham set before us is an example of faith and obedience. Abraham believed God, and as a result, he obeyed. He obeyed. Oh, God is calling uh, each one of us to put our faith in Jesus Christ. God is calling us to obey his word. God is calling us in specific ways and in very specific situations to do this and that. And there can only be one conclusion from the passage we have read today. That you need to obey God. Oh, may you be encouraged by Abraham. May the faith of Abraham be your portion today that you may respond in obedience, in obedience. What if Abraham did not respond in obedience? Where would be the founder of three religion be today? Where would be the father of faith be today? We are blessed today because of obedience of Abraham. And today I want to encourage all of us that we heed God's call in our lives that we may receive his blessing because obedience is better than sacrifice and obedience is a magnet that attracts God's blessing into our life. It's, it's, it's God's call that begins with him speaking and I am sure God is speaking. The question is, are you listening? It's God's call that involves his choice. It's because he has chosen you particularly. It's because he has chosen you for a particular thing. It, it involves God's choice. It's God's calls 
that is not a walk in the park. It's difficult, it's costly, it's sacrificial. And yet, even then, I encourage you to pursue it. It's God's call. There's a call of faith that you can only respond to God's call if you have faith. If you believe in God who is calling you from what is familiar to what is unfamiliar, to what is no, from what is known to what is unknown. And yet, the encouragement for all of us today is that we may respond in obedience to God's call. God bless you. For all of us, God is calling us. Whether we want to refer this to the very special call that is calling us to believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, or even general call of obedience uh, to, to obey His Word, or even God calling us to do specific tasks, to, to follow specific path, um, including in very what you would consider minute details. God is calling us to, to, to do things, uh, specific assignments. And, and I want to believe that we want to respond to God's call for our lives. Uh, the story of Abraham is really challenging for all of us who will want to follow God. God calls Abraham and Abraham have to respond in faith. Could fear be keeping you from responding to God's will in your life? Are you seeking to discern the will of God in your life in very specific ways? And particularly as you consider the big decisions like marriage, career, um, are you seeking to discern and follow God's will uh, in your life? And, and I want to pray that we'll be listening to what God has to say. I don't want to give you false assurance that God's calls is easy. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why I was really afraid of God calling me to pastoral ministry is because I thought that this would be very difficult. Uh, and yet God calls us and gives us the grace. Um, and, and today I look at my life and I'm like, I'm in the best place uh, where God would want me to be. It, it's not easy, but God calls is always fulfilling. And so for as many as of us, as those who are listening in this evening, I'd want to encourage us to respond to God's call by faith that you would seek to discern what is God calling me to do. May I be able to respond to that by faith. As you respond to God's call in obedience, you are unlocking many, many blessings. Oh, how we covert the blessings of Abraham. Uh, even he received a portion of those blessings and some of them he did not receive while he was on this earth. I stand here as, uh, as a product of the blessing of Abraham. And we covert the blessing of Abraham, but I'm not sure whether we are willing to pay the price of obedience that comes with God's call. And, and if in any way you are trying to run away from God, call in your life, I pray that you would be able to be encouraged this evening to know God's will for you is not cumbersome. It will be fulfilling and that you find joy and fulfillment in pursuing God's will uh, and God's special calling upon your life. And for those of us who have not known Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, I mean, it begins with you responding to God's God is calling, and it begins by you saying, yes, here I am, and putting your faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you. We, we pray for all of us, whether those who have not known Jesus Christ, Lord, even as they hear this message, that they will be able to respond as Abraham did and, and turn away from our worship of idols and come to the worship of one true God. We want to pray for all of us as we seek to discern your will for our lives, as we seek to listen to where you are calling us, that, Lord, we would have faith to respond in obedience to your calling, that we may be a blessing uh, not only to ourselves but also to others as Abraham was. Many ways we fail to be a blessing to others because we don't heed your call. And so we ask the Lord you'd uh, cause us that we may be able to respond by faith to your call uh, in, in our lives. We give you praise, we give you honor for this our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 
This is Foundation, a study of book of Genesis. I trust that you will be able to tune in even as we continue to look at the life of the father of all who believe, Abraham, next week. Moments of Truth on Truth TV. If this program is a blessing to you, do you consider giving back to this program and sharing it with friends so that we can be blessed together? Until next time, my name is Reverend Harun Juguna from AIC in Town. God bless you. As my Abubwana, ni kufanana na wewe Maisha ya Abubwana, nyote na kubakwani Nina tamani, kuwa na wewe, kuwa na wewe Kuwa na wewe, kuwa na wewe Kuwa na wewe Kuwa na wewe Kuwa na wewe Wana winuliwe Ya wabudiwe Sifazo tenizako Ewe mwanyezi Kuwa na wewe 